Today we want to look at the inspiration of the Word of God. And to start out, I want to give a definition given by Charles Hodge. He said, Revelation is the act of communicating divine knowledge to the mind. But inspiration is the act of the same Spirit controlling those who make that knowledge known to others. For example, God revealed His will to Abraham, but God used Moses to record that revelation that God gave to Abraham. I also want to give a, a quote from James Gray, who was the dean of the Moody Bible Institute in the late 1800s. He said, it should be further understood that the object is not the inspiration of the men, but the books. And sometimes I get caught up in that myself. I'll say that God inspired Paul to write Galatians, or God inspired John to write his epistles. But I need to be very careful and explain that it's not the men that were inspired. It was the record that they wrote that was inspired. It was Galatians and Romans that was inspired, and Exodus and Leviticus that was inspired. It was the books, not the men. Also, the documents that I contend are inspired are the original documents. In other words, the actual parchments that Paul wrote upon and Moses wrote. Those are the ones that I contend are inspired. Because today, we have many translations and when man translated from one language to another, well, he made mistakes. He made some copy mistakes. And James Gray says this, which I thought was very important. He said, there is no translation without error, nor could there be, considering the infirmities of human copyists. And then he gives a story where he says, that some years ago, a liberal theologian, ridiculing this point as not worthwhile, remarked that it was a matter of small consequence whether a pair of trousers were originally perfect if they were now rent. To which David James Burrell replied that it might be a small matter to the wearer of the trousers, but to the tailor who made them, he would have you know that it did not leave his shop that way. And I thought that was very interesting. You know, God would have you know that when he gave the words to the men who wrote the Bible, he would have you know that they were perfect. He would have you know that they were inerrant, even though afterwards in these this day and age after all the translations and copies that we have do have some rents in them if you will some tears that god would let, you, let would have you know that hey look when i originally gave these words and they were originally written down they were without error now the question does come about if today's versions have errors in them how do we know that the Bible is actually indeed the Word of God? Well, you know, we have so many texts. We have thousands of texts today. And James Gray goes on to state, he says that, we have so many texts of the New Testament, at least, that when compared to each other, we have in 999 cases in every thousand, the very word, of the original text. And that is so true. When you compare the thousands of manuscripts that we have, you will find that in 999 cases of a thousand, we have the very word of the original text. And, and, and when we look at those errors and look at those one case out of 999 or one case out of a thousand, we see that it has no impact on doctrine. And I think that's something that gives credit to the Word of God, that in 999 cases of a thousand, we have the very Word of God. Also something that I think is very 
important to note is fulfilled prophecy. You know, we have at least 300 prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ. And every single one of those prophecies were literally fulfilled. Nobody can boast of that. Only God can do something like that. And the Bible was right in every single instance when it came to fulfilled prophecy of the first coming of Christ. And also you see in the Old Testament how Israel, when they fell into captivity, that was also prophesied. Every prophecy that has been fulfilled has been literally fulfilled 100%. And you say, well, there's still much more prophecy to be fulfilled. That's correct. There are still some future prophecies yet to be fulfilled. But may I say, if that many prophecies have already been fulfilled, I think we have a pretty good idea that the future, those future prophecies, would also be fulfilled. And for, so fulfilled prophecy to me is an abundant and a huge testimony that the Word of God, the Bible, is the very Word of God. Now, the question is, how much of the Scripture is inspired? Well, all of it, according to the Word of God. And the Word of God makes its own claim in 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And you know, all Scripture is very important here. That means every scripture, every word in the Word of God is inspired. That means all 66 books. You know, it would be kind of hard to know the teaching that Jesus is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek if you didn't take the Genesis, the Psalms, and the book of Hebrews, and Leviticus, if you didn't take them all all those records and compare them. It would be very hard to understand that Christ was a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And then look at the book of Revelation itself. If you don't have all those Old Testament books like Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and those other Old Testament prophetic books, you would have a very rough time getting the interpretation of Revelation. It'd be very foreign to you, very confusing without those books. So you see, every book coincides with each other, is interwoven, if you will. They all go together. And every book is inspired by God. And that's very important to see. And again, when you take a look at all the authors that went into writing the Bible, you find that hardly any of them could have had any uh, um, have teamed up to write these books and compared notes or what, if you if you will, you know, because Moses lived very early on when compared to looking at Paul's writings, but yet these books, when taken all together, they flow beautifully, and they are are, are so much a testimony that the whole Word of God is the Word of God. And there's many theories of inspiration, but the one I hold to is plenary verbal inspiration. Plenary means full, verbal the words. You put it together, it means that all of the words of God are inspired. And that's what we're going to look at next time. The doctrine of plenary verbal inspiration. So until next time, Preachers and laymen unite under the authority of the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever.